Hello everyone, my name is Alessandro Busetti and I am one of the field application scientists on Metabolon's international business team. And the study I would like to share with you today is a study on cataract development in salmonid fish. Now I think the beauty of this study is that it showcases metabolomics ability to add value and insight to biological topics spanning from animal health and nutrition all the way to disease characterization. What is the background to this study? Well, simply put, the demand for fish is growing globally, wild fish stocks are depleted, and so intensive aquaculture is now a reality. Um, now, several farmed uh, salmonid species suffer from a much higher cataract uh, development. Now, why? Uh, how? Uh, how is the diet involved? Uh, what do the cataracts uh, derive from? These are just some of the questions that are addressed by this study and that metabolomics contributed in answering. I hope you enjoy. So the study was published in PLOS One in April 2017 by Rima et al. And the title is Lens Metabolic Profiling as a Tool to Understand Cataractogenesis in Atlantic Salmon and Rainbow Trout Reared at Optimum and High Temperatures. And in fact, the researchers examined cataract development in Atlantic Salmon and Rainbow Trout reared at optimum and high temperature. Uh, and so what they did was to obtain the global metabolic profiles uh, of lenses from Atlantic salmon and rainbow trout to investigate differences in lens metabolism between the species and study metabolic changes in the lenses caused by water temperature. And I would just like to take this opportunity to stress Metabolon's experience working with a broad range of uh, different matrices. In fact, we've worked with over 100 matrices uh, from when we have opened, not just the common ones like plasma, uh, so in this case, fish lenses. So the first thing the researchers confirmed was that the cataract prevalence uh, and severity of cataracts was higher in Atlantic salmon compared to rainbow trout despite equal farming and feeding conditions. Now, as you can see in the graphs in the middle of the slides, the two graphs, which represent the results at the end of the 35-day experiment, cataract prevalence um, went up in both salmon and rainbow trout, in salmon from 70 to 100%, in rainbow trout from 10 to uh, over 50%, and so did the uh, cataract scores. Now, so the lens metabolic profiles uh, likely indicate differences in lens metabolism that may explain or is the consequence of the higher susceptibility for cataracts in Atlantic salmon. Now, um, if you look at the graphs to the left and right of the slide, uh, one of the major differences between the species was seen in the histidine metabolism. In fact, uh, quantification of histidine uh, and, and acetylhistidine, as you can see on the right, confirmed a higher concentration of both of these in rainbow trout lenses compared to Atlantic salmon uh, lenses. Now, uh, suboptimal levels of dietary histidine have been identified as a major risk factor um, in the development uh, in farmed Atlantic salmon of cataracts, and it can be mitigated um, uh, through dietary supplementation of histidine. Um, now, the, the mitigating effect is thought to derive uh, from the synthesis and concentration of n acetyl histidine in the lens. And so the concentration of uh, n acetyl histidine in Atlantic uh, salmon lenses uh, is, is often considered a marker for the risk for cataract development. Now, in, in, the, in the present study, both species had the same diet, although the, uh, the histidine daily requirement concentration was sufficient for trout was, was, was slightly lower than the recommended 13.4 grams per kilogram of feed that is necessary for salmon. So the observed differences in cataract development between the species may be explained by a different requirement or metabolism of histidine with levels resulting in a higher susceptibility to cataracts for Atlantic salmon, regardless of the rearing temperature. Now, N-acetylhistidine has been shown to function as an osmolite in the fish lens, therefore uh, contributing to maintaining the water balance and volume regulation. So the depleted levels of N-acetylhistidine in the salmon lens indicate that the salmon lens ability to osmoregulate are, are lowered, 
while the high concentrations in the rainbow trout suggest a stronger standing defense against shift in osmolality and thus possibly a lower susceptibility uh, to cataracts. And it's truly staggering to see the lens metabolic profile differences between the two species at the end of the 35-day uh, experiment, and most of all, the biological implications. Um, for example, as I said before, osmotic uh, cataracts in Atlantic salmon are usually associated with reduced osmoregulatory abilities after seawater transfer. And um, the level, for example, of an N-acetyl aspartate or NAA which is an analog osmolite of uh, N-acetyl histidine in the brain was present at lower levels in both rainbow trout and Atlantic salmon reared at 19 compared to 13 degrees. And uh, together with the reduced concentration of N-acetyl histamine in the rainbow trout lenses reared at higher temperature, this suggests an increased uh, usage of osmolites at higher temperature. And in addition, the Atlantic salmon lenses had lower levels of NAA in lenses with a high cataract score supporting a connection between the lens ability uh, to osmoregulate and cataract uh, formation. Now, there were a lot of changes in the glutathione metabolism, which you can see in the middle of the slide. Uh, as you know, it's an, an important uh, innate antioxidant in the lens. Um, its low concentration has been associated with cataract development in animals and humans. Um, and as I said, many significant changes in this uh, pathway. For example, ophthalmate, a structural analog of glutathione, was present at higher levels in both Atlantic salmon and rainbow trout exposed to 19 degrees and at higher levels in Atlantic salmon compared to rainbow trout. Uh, ophthalmate has been suggested to be a biomarker for uh, hepatic glutathione depletion in humans and thus a marker for oxidative stress. Uh, ophthalmate may be a useful marker to assess oxidative stress in lenses. Now, um, if you look at the right, you will see uh, the lens uh, one carbon metabolism. Again, several intermediates in the transmethylation pathway of the carbon, of uh, the one carbon metabolism uh, were present at different levels in rainbow trout and Atlantic salmon. And Atlantic <clears throat> salmon reared at 19 degrees had significantly higher levels of uh, S adenosyl methionine, SAM, and uh, S adenosyl homocysteine uh, uh, compared to salmon reared at 13 degrees. So, <clears throat> now very important lens lipid metabolism. Uh, lots of changes here. Um, now, the concentration of total lipids in Atlantic salmon uh, lenses is approximately 5 milligrams per gram of wet weight. And the lipid class composition indicates that the main function of lens lipids are for structural purposes and messengers as opposed to energy, uh, with an abundance of phospholipids and cholesterol. Now, in the present study, Atlantic salmon lenses had a higher level of sphingosine, which is an intermediate in the ceramide uh, synthesis, compared to the rainbow trout. And this may be related to the higher severity of cataracts in the salmon. Uh, high levels of ceramide have been, in fact, found in uh, cataractrous lenses and have been su suggested to be part of the aciology uh, of age-related cataracts. Now, uh, the Atlantic salmon lenses also had a higher level of non-esterified uh, arachidonic acid and prostaglandin E2 compared to the rainbow trout. This may be a result of the more severe damage uh, to the Atlantic lenses uh, resulting in a release in ARA from the cell membranes and thus a higher production of prostag prostag prostaglandin E. <clears throat> now, prostaglandins are involved in several biological functions that may influence cataract uh, formation, such as regulation of cell proliferation, inflammation processes in lens epithelial cells, um, uh, osmoregulation. Thus, the higher levels uh, in Atlantic salmon compared to rainbow trout may be related to the higher severity of cataracts in salmon. Uh, however, the exact mechanism of cause-effect uh, relationships remains unknown. Uh, <clears throat> now, as you can see on the right, osmotic, uh, well, uh, osmotic cataracts have also been associated with elevated plasma glucose concentrations in Atlantic salmon. And the plasma glucose concentration was significantly higher in Atlantic salmon reared at 19 compared to 13 degrees. 
Uh, although no differences were observed in the lens glucose levels at the end of the experiment, differences uh, observed in intermediates in the glucose breakdown pathways suggest a temperature-dependent dysfunction or a sort of overload of glycolysis in the Atlantic salmon lenses. The level of fructose and glucose increased with increasing cataract score in rainbow trout lenses, uh, suggesting that alterations in the glucose metabolism may be related to the observed cataract development in rainbow trout. Now for a quick summary, uh, Atlantic salmon were found to be more susceptible to cataract development than rainbow trout under the given uh, similar rearing conditions. Um, differences in histidine metabolism may uh, explain in part this uh, susceptibility difference between the two species. Um, however, almost 50% of the rainbow trout uh, developed cataract at both temperatures suggesting that other factors might be involved in the etiology of the development of cataracts in rainbow trout, such as the effects on the carbohydrate metabolism that were observed. Finally, the rearing temperatures did not increase the cataract development significantly in either species uh, during the experiment. However, the metabolic profile indicates that high temperatures do alter osmoregulatory ability, carbohydrate metabolism, and redox regulation in the lenses, which may result in a higher risk for cataract development. Thank you all for your attention. Please contact us for any further information.